ask them to part. If you hang around at the checkpoint, so you've said, oh, we're checking out, but then you sit down and have another cup of tea, we then think that you are delayed on the trail. So we have a time um, point where we then start calling teams to make sure that you are safe um, and you will then fall over into that category. So please, if you are checking out or you decide to change your mind, go back and let the checkpoint know um, so that we, we know where you are. If you do need to retire, you can only retire at the checkpoint. So please do not leave the event mid-trail section. Again, if you retire mid-trail, we do not know where you are and we will get triggered um, for an emergency response because we won't know where you are. Retirement stickers, which you can see uh, is that little beautiful blue sticker on that bib, um, are issued for each retired walker. So one of those might be on your remaining team member. So if the, the blue member of your team is retired, we'll, we'll pop a little sticker on their bib and then we can then easily identify that at the next trade checkpoint when you go through. If your team is dropped down to two members or less, you must walk with another team. And that's for your safety. It's following bushwalking guidelines. Um, and we just want to make sure that everybody is safe during the event. It doesn't mean that you have to walk with that team for the entire rest of the journey. You're more than welcome to. But if you find that you're wanting to walk faster or slower, at the next checkpoint, you can then transfer across to another team. Just let the checkpoint um, crew know, and they can change that in our system. So this is just a, um, a visual of what we what we check on what we have on the event control center, and that's um, showing where the walkers are, so where all of you are. The red little red section you can see there is the red overdue, and that's when we start calling you. So the way we do that is we will start calling your members of your team to see where you are. If we don't get a response from them, we start calling your support crew. If we don't get a response from them, we then send out an emergency crew to your last known location and we will start looking for you. So please make sure that you do check in and check out um, and you, so that we know where you are. So this is the event control center. At the event control center, we do have a number of representatives from different organisations. So we have representatives from New South Wales Police, New South Wales Ambulance, New South Wales SES Bush Search and Rescue, um, Crest who looks after all of our radio communications, St John's Ambulance and Oxfam Australia as well as National Parks as well. Um, in the field we send out three, um, three emergency response teams, so two that are Bush Search and Rescue and one that's in New South Wales Ambulance Special Ops Team. Uh, we also have SES, Rural Fire Service and Marine Rescue New South Wales on standby uh, if you do need to use their services. So response crews, these are some of the friendly bush search and rescue crew that you may see on the trail who are extracting. They are volunteers, so please give them a wave, um, give them a smile, say hello if they are walking past you. They're probably on their way to um, an incident to help somebody. So please do move to one side. Um, the other thing to note is in some sections of the trail, you may see a four-wheel drive coming towards you while you were walking. You might go, oh, why is there a car driving on this trail? It's likely that it is one of these bush search and rescue teams going to respond to an event. Um, so please make sure that you move to one side and let them pass. Wonderful. Now, we are walking in some of the most, I'm a little bit biased, but a little, some of the most amazing national parks I think in Australia. Uh, and we're very lucky to have this evening with us um, Peter, who's our representative from the National Parks, who's going to run you through a little bit um, and a little bit of things and also some reminders on what to do when you are in um, New South Wales National Parks. <laughs> Um, over this 
venture. And, um, and uh, they are a very impressive team. And um, in fact, we poached one of them this year. So we're, we're very lucky to have Aid with us now. All right, so coming through Barara Valley Regional Park, you'll, you'll kick off in, oh, kick off in Karingai Chase National Park, up there near um, Barara. Um, then you come, uh, sorry, Brooklyn, you come through Barara Valley Regional Park, Garrigal, uh, and now on Sydney Harbour where you'll finish. Um, there were beautiful parks, but there were some steep sections in them. Um, with your support group, particularly going to Bob and Head, um, I'd just like to remind them that there are a lot of cyclists that go through that park on the weekend and more particularly when you're coming back up the hill, on the way down the hill you probably have cyclists very tied up behind you, coming down some of them go very quickly, but coming back up the other side, uh, just as a safety measure, it's very windy, for your support groups, please don't lose patience and try to overtake them too early and don't trust the cyclists when they're making through. Um, a lot of cyclists will think that you can get past and we'll give you the way through, um, but don't move until you can see yourself that it's safe because you might come around and there's a the cyclist coming down right in the middle of the road on, at 70 kilometres an hour. There could be cars that are coming down faster than expected and that is typically how we have accidents and some of them very serious accidents in the park is when somebody gets way through and it's just not safe to come safe. As a driver, be very patient coming back up the hill and wait until you can see that it's clear for your own uh, movements there. I've got to remember we can see it out the front. Um, so with park use fees, um, the um, park support crew pass, that's just to limit the parking in there. That's not a park entry fee. So for everyone to have a nice day on arrival, um, don't get into a slinging match or a fight with the person on the gate. Um, we don't put our policy decision makers on the gates. Uh, the people on the gates, are, they're there and they're instructed to collect money. Uh, Oxfam people aren't the only people who come through the park. And the people who do that job have heard every excuse there is in the book. There are so many excuses for why I as an individual should be allowed to get through the park for nothing. But, you know, although you know, I left my pass, I've got 20, cars, 20, 20 passes, but today one of them blew off in the wind, or my wife and my husband's having a heart attack down there, it's an emergency. All manner of excuses, I work down here, I'm a miner, I'm going to dig a hole down here. Whatever the excuse is, they've heard more before. So to avoid an argument, um, if you haven't got an annual entry pass, um, they're $65 for a year. If you're going to be coming through on multiple days, supporting the crew in different areas, um, the, entry, the entry fee is $12 a day now, so um, you're halfway there for the rest of the year if you buy an annual entry pass. Um, I'd suggest you buy that before the weekend. Um, you don't want to get stuck at the gates in a big crowd, holding things up, um, if, you, if you know that you need to get down there to support your walkers. So that's the easy way through. Otherwise, uh, just expect it's a normal day in the park and you'll be treated like everybody else in that thing, apart from people being admiring <laughs> of those people are walking through. I'm still impressed with what people do with this walk. Um, has a reduction burns. Um, the time right now is perfect for burning. Um, there's only one hazard reduction that we have planned that will be in Barara Valley over the next uh, week or so. Uh, other than that, they'll all be um, put back until after your weekend. There's a couple that um, are here in that part of the world and likewise uh, up in Kuringo Chase, the top end there and down in Carrigal. Uh, so we've managed to juggle those all around to occur on the weekend and the week following Oxfam. So, on the day you go through, there's one particular fire at the top end of the Barara Valley, nowhere near where you walk, but if you're coming through in the morning and um, there's been heavy dew, the cold air drainage will bring that smell down to where you're walking through. So you might smell a fire, but that fire that you smell will be a week old by then and won't pose you any threat. Um, take care of the trail if you can. Um, try not to braid or walk wide in the bush to get around people. Make the call, faster team coming through. Let people stand aside to let you go through. Uh, there's 2,000 of you coming through uh, beyond what our normal wear and tear is on the park. So try not to create new tracks and trails as you go through there. Um, this is a special one. Uh, it's about being kind to the park. Be kind to your uh, fellow Oxfam trail walkers. 
and you particularly be kind to the cleanup crews coming through. Uh, in short, don't go in the park. Uh, there, are some, there are toilets at the checkpoints and uh, there's mid-place toilets. If you can't make it that far, um, from a fitness perspective, you have to question whether or not you should retire. Um, it is a very gruelling event and um, if you're working that hard, your body will start to shut down a little bit and you will start to lose a little bit of control. That's your body's tip that um, you're at the edge of your physical capability. So if you're at this point, um, try to make it through as best you can, but don't, don't take it too hard. You know, if you have to quit, you have to quit. Um, this is, a, this is a, a, an event where you should all be enjoying it. We all admire the people coming through. Um, best way for your support crew to get through and avoid an argument, remind them not to bring your dog, they won't be let through. Um, dogs are banned in national parks. Um, likewise, the people on the gates, they're not the people that set policy, they won't have time to put it through the minister's office and change the policy for the park on the day. <laughs> don't make the argument and don't say, it's pointless asking, why can't I have my dog? Their answer to you is because you're not allowed. Um, the deeper philosophical arguments, they can be had some other time, but it won't work on the day. Um, we've had people come through that have got very upset and very irate. They have to turn around, leave the park, find somewhere else to drop the dog, and hopefully get back in time for them to provide their support. So, more than no dogs, it will become inconvenient. Um, well, that's effectively it. Um, I'm full of admiration for you people, the, the cause, the effort, the fitness. Um, I was reminded on the training thing, we have our firefighter fitness a week after you guys do, and um, we're all full on into our training and getting nervous that we haven't done enough yet. But I'm, I'm intimidated with you guys, you guys are doing so much more. So, congratulations to you guys and the team. So at each of the checkpoints, I'm just going to dive straight back in. Um, at each of the checkpoints, there will be this checkpoint diagram um, should have been in your, your pack, uh, so that you can look in that a little bit more detail. But pretty much at each of the, the checkpoints, there will always be first aid, there will always be water, and there will always be toilets. Some of the other things that will be at checkpoints will vary between checkpoint to checkpoint, but those three will always be there. Jumping into first aid services. So we'll, we'll have the lovely volunteers of St John's Ambulance at every checkpoint. Now I do encourage you to go and see them and go and see them early. Okay? They're there to help you. It's going to be a lot easier to deal with any medical concerns, no matter how big or small they are, at a checkpoint than it will be mid-trail. If, if you do are having an incident mid-trail, we then do have to send a response crew to you. Uh, so that makes it a little bit tricky. So if you've got an issue, even if it's just blisters or a bit of a, a mild headache, please go and see them early um, and get yourself treated. Also, make sure that you're looking out for yourself and for your teammates. Something just to flag is that you can, over a period of time, if you are taking lots of Panadol, for example, you can get yourself to a point where you do have an overdose or an adverse reaction to that. So please make sure that you are listening to your body uh, and you are seeing and, and thinking in advance. Um, what that might mean if you are having that dehydration headache now, how are you going to be in another few hours? So thinking about it early and getting that one sorted. Allied Health Services, we will have them at a couple of checkpoints, so they will be at those checkpoints that are listed there. Please keep in mind they are volunteers that are giving up their time to come and treat you. Okay? There will be a, also likely a uh, waiting line for them, so please be patient, have a cup of tea, have a snack while you're waiting for your feet to get strapped or uh, something to be seen to and use that time effectively and just be, just be patient. So at each of the checkpoints um, we will have a few different things available. We need all of your teams to be self-sufficient. The reason being is that not all checkpoints will have um, uh, support crew access, so checkpoint one does not have support access, um, and the other other um, the other checkpoints may or may not have food vendors there. So we will be providing um, water, cold and hot water will be available at all checkpoints. Uh, tea, coffee, and hot chocolate will be available at all checkpoints, and we will also be providing bananas at checkpoint one, and that's because the support crews are not able to access there. So we will be supplementing. So please grab them, pop them in your backpacks, or take them with you. Uh, but please make sure that you are popping that waste in the bin. We 
don't want to see banana peels along the trail as the sweet teams come behind you. There will also be various uh, food vendors at each of the checkpoints, but please don't rely on them because their times will be variable and they're likely to only be there during peak, uh, peak um, key walking times, so they might not be there when you were there, so please be self-sufficient to have uh, other things planned. The vendors are just there for an extra bonus. And please don't forget to bring your own BYO cup. Um, we are selling some up in the foyer uh, if you would like to bring them, but we are a cup-free event. So our vendors and also at all of the checkpoints, there won't be any disposable cups, so you will need to bring your own key cup. So if you want that, that tea and coffee and hot chocolate, please bring along a uh, non-disposable one of your key cups. Now sleeping. There is only one checkpoint. Excuse me, sorry. Um, there's only one checkpoint that has the facilities for camping, and that is checkpoint four at St. Ives. So 50k walkers, you will bypass that and head on through, but 100k walkers, this is your opportunity to catch a couple of hours of sleep. We do recommend uh, no more than three to four hours, and you must leave before the checkpoint closing time. If the checkpoint closes and you are still asleep, unfortunately, you will not be allowed to continue walking. So please set your alarms. Um, you don't want to oversleep that one. Waste management. So at each of our checkpoints, we will have a number of um, bins there, and that's for your, your waste. But we want to, um, I suppose the reason why we're noting it specifically is we pay for all the waste removal from the events. So we feel like that money could go to better locations, it could be going towards our, our fundraising, and we want you to be thinking about that uh, in terms of what waste you bring in and out of the events. So the way that you could make a difference in terms of waste is reducing the waste that you produce. So bringing things like nude foods, um, things where you don't need to be you bringing things in bulk that don't have excess amounts of packaging, putting things in Tupperware, um, reusable beeswax traps and things like that, and also taking your waste home with you. So if you do need to bring waste in, your support crews or even in your own backpack, you may have brought that waste in. It should be fairly easy to then take that waste whether it's with yourself or whether it's with your support crew, again, off that event and place that in your bins at home. We do, we have over the past few years, have we've been implementing a lot of um, green procedures. So in 2016, we didn't have recyclables and we weren't looking at how we could be the most sustainable event we could be. Um, so everything was going to landfill. In 2017, we introduced um, recycling and some other streams of waste. We reduced our waste footprint by 29%, which is quite large. And then last year in 2018, we reduced it to another 17%. So in the past two years, we've reduced our waste footprint by 46%, which is pretty massive. So we're hoping again in 2019 we can further reduce that. We also go through a big certification uh, where we have the whole event um, certified that we are doing it as sustainably as possible. And for each year, um, we are implementing those um, different goals and we're hoping um, in the next few years to be working towards becoming a plastic free event. Uh, the different streams of waste that we have, we will have a garbage, so your, your general waste stream, we will have paper and cardboard and we will have combing um, recyclables. Just to note, um, if those, those are the different streams, please separate your rubbish and your waste if you do need to use these bins. Because, for example, if the combing pool recyclables is contaminated with other streams of waste, we may then pay, I think it's twice as much um, to then have that bin removed. If you are um, at, at the checkpoints, you will see our volunteers moving that waste around because we actually don't pay for any bins to be taken away that are empty. So if we can um, reduce our footprint, so some of those bins don't even get used, that would be a dream. Um, but we'll, we'll see if we can make sure that we take out as much as possible, that would be fantastic. A note on coffee cups. So we do ask that you bring your reusable coffee cup, but if you, for some reason, have got yours at home, we you grab one on the train on the way to the event, and you do happen to have one of these coffee cups, no matter what sort of coffee, coffee cup it is, whether it's a uh, paper one, whether it's lined with plastic or whether it's one of the new um, biodegradable compostable ones, they all unfortunately will need to go into the general waste stream because the bins that we have are not able to recycle any coffee cups. So if you have a disposable one, please empty it of liquid, um, pop that in the bin, but the plastic lid, if it does have a plastic lid, can go in the recycling, which is fantastic, so we can sort of, um, reuse and remake some of that coffee cup. 
Like I said before, we've got keep cups and also some fantastic Nalgene water bottles up the front. Um, they're $15 each or $40. Tonight's probably a good time to grab them and pack them in your bag. Now trail sections. Hopefully all of you have walked at least some of the trails so far. What I'm going to do is I'm going to whip through each of the trail sections and just flag a few different notes for you um, and some of the things that we've identified as maybe tricky or something, something for you to know. So on the trail, hopefully you've walked it before, or walk sections, you will know that there is a lot of uneven walking surfaces. So boulders, there's rocks, um, and there's sort of meandering trail. There's numerous creek crossings, um, some steep cliff lines, um, and some of those uh, ascents and well, ascents and descents are quite steep. One of the locations that springs to mind is down into Sam's Creek for the 100 kilometers. Um, with the there's various trip hazards on the on the walk as well, so roots, rocks, things like that, um, and that also is also tides. We luckily are hopefully not going to be affected by tides as they're quite low this year, which is really good. So some extra care care is required at section one. So the main section that needs um, your attention there is at the railway crossing. There will be um, gates that close. That's for your safety because there's a train coming. So please don't try and push them open and try and walk across the train tracks. Um, that is not something that we uh, advise. Uh, and please make sure that when you are crossing this lovely pedestrian crossing here, you are using the pedestrian crossing and not just crossing wherever you feel like it. There is, this is a quite a busy road at times and there will be trail marshals there to assist you. Also at Cowland Station, the lovely uh, staff members at Cowland Station like to provide you with um, a bottle of water. It is a single use plastic bottle. So we do ask that if you have your reusable bottle, just 100 meters or so down the way is the first checkpoint and there will be running water there where you can use um, to use to refill your water bottle. So please only take this water bottle if you need to. We also ask that if you do take it, please finish it and then put it in the bins that the train station has provided so that they're not put into our waste streams. Also to note, there is no support crew access at checkpoint one. So bring your kit cup and there'll also be money um, and some a little bit of money because there will be a barbecue there at that first checkpoint with lovely sausage sizzle. Banana peels, I mentioned it before, please don't um, pop them on the side of the track. Use bins as provided or take them out with you. Um, and then intersection two at Barara Waters Road. As we're coming into Barara Waters, um, this traffic um, section at this uh, pedestrian crossing will be one where it is traffic is prioritised, not walkers. The reason being is that if traffic banks up at this section because we have a steady stream of walkers come through, this actually then affects the whole Pacific Highway. Um, so we need to make sure that we are managing this appropriately. There will be traffic management and also trail marshal volunteers there to help you cross. So please just listen to them and they'll give you instructions. Uh, we will make it so that it's a, a group of walkers crosses at one time. This area is also a red, quite residential area leading into checkpoint two, so at the community centre. So please be mindful, especially if you're walking through the area at night time, think about how you would like people to be walking past your house and keep your noise to a minimum. Down into Sam's Creek, leaving checkpoint two to head to checkpoint three, so section three of the trail. Uh, Sam's Creek is one of our, I'd say one of our most technical sections of the trail. If you haven't walked it already, and you have time, I'd advise you to go and have a look. There is a number of boulders um, and sort of trip hazards on there, so please take it easy and take your time. There will be a volunteers team down there as well to assist, uh, but please be mindful of walking along there. Once you've walked up Live Oak Valley, um, which can be a little bit slippery with the river that, or the little creek that runs through there, you will pop up the top and need to um, cross across on the Pacific Highway. Highway. We ask that you use this footbridge. Please don't try and cross um, it's like three or four lanes, or maybe even six um, lanes of uh, traffic there. So please don't just cross. Use the pedestrian crossing. The other place to note is at. Um, down at uh, Kringai Chase Road leading into checkpoint three, you will also need to cross a road there. Please be mindful, look both ways and listen to any instructions given to you by the trail marshals. Uh, intersection or coming out of Bobbin Head um, and intersection four, I mentioned before about the uh, Bobbin Head Bridge and this is where we pick up the 50k walkers. Please be mindful as you're walking, um, don't push, be patient um, and head on through. 
the steep cliffs see the side, so please be aware of those as well. And when you do uh, cross the road on the head, there will be barriers there, so please take it easy um, and make sure that you're following any instructions given by staff there as well. Now this is a sign that is placed on the trail to make sure that you go to the right place. Now at um, between check sections uh, checkpoint 4 and checkpoint 5, or th 3 and 5, there is the turn off for the 100 kilometre teams to turn left and head into checkpoint 4. The 50 kilometre teams you want to go right and head on through to checkpoint 5. 50k teams, if you take a wrong turn, um, you'll go for an extra little bit of a walk. Um, and 100k teams, if you miss that uh, turn off, you will miss the checkpoint entirely. Um, so you will need to turn around and go back. So please be aware of that one. Section 5, the trickiest section I'd say, is crossing the road at Motorvale Road. Please make sure that you are using the traffic signals um, and you're waiting to cross and you are not crossing um, without those traffic signals. It is quite a busy road uh, and there is a lot of traffic there. Um, into the rest of Section 5 uh, takes us through to French's Forest. It is very residential. It's our most residential section of the trail. So please be mindful um, of what noise, um, also people's property, uh, making sure that you are not walking through people's front yards. Uh, be mindful of where you're walking and walking on the footpath. Um, into, uh, skipping over section, section 6 and into section 7, um, please just make sure that you are being cautious while you are exiting Davidson Park. Your support crew teams will be driving in on this road, so there will be a fair amount of traffic and um, numerous cars, so please be aware as you're crossing and um, uh, make sure you follow any instructions. There's also some barbed wire along this section, so please just keep your eyes out. It's only a very small section, um, but please be aware that you don't snag yourself on that one. Also, the natural bridge and rock slab. Hopefully some of you have gone and walked this section because I, I quite like it. Um, going across the natural bridge is beautiful. But there will be a rope placed there just to give you a little bit of assistance as you are crossing, um, to give you a little bit of assistance as you will be. It's quite late in the walk, uh, so that will be placed prior to the event. And checkpoint eight sounds a little bit silly, but don't miss the turning off into Tanya Park and into the finish. It has been done before, uh, so please just be aware of where that one is. Now, very quickly, guys, I'm getting. I know this has gone on for quite a while. Um, just a few last things to remember. So, support crews, you need one. If you don't have one, you need to find one. Uh, so please make sure you get that organised as, as, um, as soon as possible. Make sure that they read the support crew map book, which has got all of the maps in it, and also the support crew guide, um, and any, um, any of the questions that are in there as well. Make sure that they bring along their reusable cup, or you could purchase one as a thank you gift. Um, your team must be self-sufficient, so they need to have all of the things that you need for the, um, for the whole walk. They also need to make sure, as we've mentioned before, that they are displaying the vehicle identification pass um, and there is no checkpoint crew access at checkpoint one. Um, another reminder, this does not waive the National Parks entrance fees and like Peter said, please don't um, argue with the lovely tall booth people, it's not um, their problem and they can't change anything there on the day. So you will need that one for checkpoint three, checkpoint six and the 50k start. Um, support crews, if they can please not arrive more than 30 minutes prior to their team's arrival, um, just to limit the amount of cars we have in, it, in at each of the sites. Please follow the instructions from the parking marshals. We can't have trailers and caravans because there's not enough room. Um, no pets like we've discussed before. No smoking. Please make sure that you're not driving fatigue or your support crew isn't. Um, and no meeting teams outside the checkpoints. We just ask that um, because it will clog up sections of the trail and the residential streets around the area um, and please take your waste with you. Um, so the live tracker, there will be um, team progress so your team can log in to their, your support team can log into there and, and see where you are at so they can get a little bit of an idea of when you've left checkpoints um, and how you're progressing so they can make sure that they're there when they need to be. Um, and if we can all make sure that we're doing three green things at the event, so being responsible, so minimise our packaging and using reusables, don't um, litter on the trail, so pick your rubbish up and if you see anything, take that home with you and be responsible, so make sure you recycle at home, so let's recycle at the event as well. 
Just a quick reminder, there might be people in your family who can't take a part in the support crew, or maybe you've had friends that have had to drop out because they can't work out, uh, they can't walk the distance of the, uh, the trail. There is a number of volunteer roles that are still available. So we have over 400 volunteers confirmed, but we need almost 100 volunteers still to make the event run. So we have got these online. The, things that we, the, the roles that we really, really need is vice captains for checkpoints, trail marshals who have been those people that are giving you the um, enthusiasm to continue walking, sweep teams that walk along and pick up all the trail markers towards the end, and we also need a few people to drop off some leaf leaflets to residents in the areas that we walk through. So if you think, can think of anybody that would love to volunteer their time for even just a, a couple of hours, um, please jump on the website and direct them there as well. So finally, I'm sorry, we're almost at the end here. Um, don't forget to bring your your um, your forms that Marina went through. Make sure that you're catching the train to the start or you're carpooling. Make sure you've got your cups and your bottles, um, your mobile phones, and also your event map books. Make sure you've got your first aid kit per team. Make sure you've got your space blankets and you're prepared for all weather contingencies in terms of your clothing. But there's no support crew access at checkpoint one. Make sure you remember the 100 kilometres this way, 150 kilometres this way, um, and make sure that your support crews know that we want them to take their waste transfer. And please make sure that you take time during the event to thank our amazing volunteers. Without them, we certainly could not run this event at all. A big thank you as well to our points spot, uh, sponsors, um, Paddy Pallon and Deloitte. Paddy Pallon out in the foyer, that you're welcome to go and have um, a chat with them. They've got some gear here this evening to purchase. And we might now just take any questions if anyone does have any questions. Due to time, if you could just come down for questions, that would be better. Also, Someone dropped um, black gloves in the foyer. If it's whoever else gloves these up, please come and collect them.